What is going on internet? Lou here and uh, I'm going to be bringing you guys a little bit of an update on what's been going on uh, over the last month as far as uh, technology is concerned. So let me start off by saying I could not write this stuff that I'm about to share with you guys. Um, so this started about a month ago and I realized since I started compiling ROMs for the Samsung Galaxy Nexus that my you know really middle of the road consumer grade um, laptop it was a sony vio it was a core i3 um, you know good machine but it just wasn't cutting it as far as compiling ice cream sandwich you know builds took like two two and a half hours um, if i got home from work now you know you do your usual stuff you eat dinner you settle in and and you try to to run a build you know it, it eats up a good majority of the night and it puts my my system out of commission i can't do anything else on it really while it's compiling because it's really taken up all the system resources and you know my productivity is basically shot so i knew i needed to really upgrade my system um i was in a big box consumer electronics store which will go unnamed and on a whim i picked up a um, asus core i7 laptop decent machine it, it was a it was only a dual core i7 it, it had hyper threading it had eight gigs of ram um integrated graphics you know i don't i don't game on my computer so integrated graphics was okay um let's see you know that that's basically it you know eight gigs of ram core i7 and um integrated graphics decent machine two weeks later well two and a half weeks later a motherboard dies so I bring it back to the, to, the, to the store, talk to the guys in the kind of tech department there. And, you know, they, they actually initially wanted me to, to do a manufacturer um, claim, you know, for, for the hardware defect. And, you know, that would have put, I had to ship the computer out. It would have put it out of commission for weeks. You know what, you know, it, at this point, with them selling me a laptop that had a faulty motherboard, that was unacceptable. Now they did provide really good customer service. You know they let me swap it out. They didn't have that model in stock, so I decided to spend a couple hundred dollars more and pick up another machine that was a second gen i7 with a quad core um, processor. It had again eight gigs of RAM, but this one also had a um, discrete graphics card. Little did I know, little did I know it was like a hybrid graphics setup, which ended up being a nightmare. But anyway. Um, after about eight days, I eventually got the hybrid graphics working flawlessly. Eight days later, the RAM is bad. RAM goes. Now I'm pissed. So I go back to the to that said store, um, decide I want to return it. They asked me if I want anything else. I said no. Uh, just give me my money back. Send me on my way. So they did. They gave me my money back. No problems with that. Um, you know, it's an electronics store, and, I, and I'm a geek, so of course I'm looking around, and I see this Dell setup that is really odd for this particular store, because it, it was really on the higher end, and I don't usually see these kinds of setups there, so it really caught me off guard. I'll get into more of the specs in a minute. So I picked it up. Again, it was a desktop. Now in this whole process, I'm, uh, I was kind of contemplating, you know, what I used my computer for. I had to use laptops for years. You know, now that I'm getting to more really CPU intensive tasks and, and I want to get into more video and uh, editing and as I'm trying to build up my YouTube channel, things like that, I said, you know, maybe a desktop's better. So, you know, everything kind of worked out for a reason. Uh, I needed to get out of laptops anyway. So I picked up this desktop, bring it home, put, you know, get everything set up, all my peripherals, everything, boot the computer. Of course, I want to install Linux on it and CD-ROM drive doesn't work. I kid you not, CD-ROM drive does not work. I could tell just by the sound that it that it was making. It wasn't spinning the disc. The, the, the disc wasn't being read. At this point, I'm so frustrated about having to return computers. I was just going to go out and buy a CD-ROM drive and replace it myself. But you know what? I said, I just spent all this money. It's unacceptable. This is the third machine in a month that has died on me. It's just, it's completely unacceptable. So I bring it back, and um, again, customer service was very good. I let them know the CD-ROM drive was dead. Right away, they started processing my return. Um, I was afraid they didn't have this model in stock because I, I returned it at a different location that I, that I purchased it. Uh, luckily for me, they had one. 
you know, that I'm kind of going back and forth with the tech. It's funny. I accidentally had one of my, I had a Fedora 16 disc in the uh, CD-ROM drive, and he found it, and the guy got a laugh. Um, he was kind of a Linux user himself, and when he saw the Fedora disc, it was it was kind of a cool uh, little geek moment there. But anyway, um, they hooked it up to all their diagnostic machines. Sure enough, of course, the CD-ROM's dead. Uh, drive is dead, and, um, you know, they gave me a new computer. Thankfully, we're only on day two now, um, but I got a working system, and it's a beast of a system. Now, prior to actually picking this up, I was contemplating buying a computer from uh, System76, and for those of you who don't know, System76 is an awesome company. Um, they basically um, have their niche in um, open source, um, specifically Linux, and... Uh, even more specifically, Ubuntu or Ubuntu. Guys, I don't really care, by the way, how to pronounce it. I've gotten comments before that I'm pronouncing Ubuntu wrong. That's how I say it. I don't really care what the pronunciation is. People freak out about that. But Ubuntu, um, they specifically uh, tout that they ship their setups with Ubuntu. And uh, they do a really great job of it, guys. I mean, they're a perfect example of how you can sell Linux. I mean, go to their website. It's professional, it's sleek, it's modern, it's attractive. Um, they really you know, targeted all the best parts of Linux, all the best parts of Ubuntu or Ubuntu. And um, you know, they, they talk about your, your five gigabytes of free cloud storage with uh, Ubuntu One. They talk about all the social networking integration. They talk about you know, the software center and all the free software. They talk about a virtually virus-free uh, environment. Um, you know that it's secure and that it's stable and you know they do a real good job of, of marketing Linux and positioning Ubuntu as a sales tool and I was really impressed by that now they have a few different setups they have um, as far as desktops are concerned they have a, a wild beast they have a wild dog and I think they have a leopard extreme uh, they have a fourth one but they're you know really entry level and uh, I was actually looking at the wild dog setup um, you know, the Leopard Extreme was starting to approach a price point. I think starting price is twelve ninety nine on that. Um, you know, I wanted to stick to like around a thousand dollars. So I was looking at at the Wild Beast, and I I basically configured the desktop to have like the second gen gen uh, Core i seven with hyper threading. Let's see, a solid state drive. I think it was like one hundred twenty gigabyte Intel SSD, uh, sixteen gigs of RAM. Um, a 1 gig NVIDIA uh, graphics card, um, an 802.11 in wireless card, uh, CD-ROM drive, combo drive. I think that's about it. And I think the price ended up coming out to be like 1250 And, you know, when you look at the, the specs that I had, it, you know, that's an awesome price. When you look at the other big box OEMs like, like Dell, HP, um, that's the price point around that you're going to have to pay to get a system with them. It's very competitive. And for a small OEM company, that's actually really great. So, you know, as far as price is concerned, I find them competitive with the other big OEMs. And that's that says a lot. So, you know, unfortunately, though, I've gone basically a month without a really solid functioning computer. And preferably, I wanted something, you know, soon. It was going to be, I think, at least five or six days because uh, I did email them um, and it was going to be like five or six days for them to build it. And then, you know, of course, they got to ship it and so on. And now we're talking like five or six weeks now that I'm going without a, a really solid computer. So when I saw this Dell XPS set up, uh, I, I picked it up. And um, I got this Dell, and I'll show you guys the specs. It's uh, what I'm on right now. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it's definitely a beast of a computer uh, for the price. Um it's got the second gen Intel Core i7. It's the 2600, so it's uh, got the hyper threading. It's a quad core processor. It's 3.4 gigahertz. It goes up to 3.8 gigahertz with a turbo boost. For those of you who don't know, basically, if an application isn't optimized for multi, multi cores, um, you know, the CPU will clock up to basically give you better performance on that application. And, you know, this goes up to 3.8 gigahertz. It has an 8 megabyte cache memory. Has 12 gigs of DDR3 RAM. Kind of a weird setup. Uh, when I opened up the case and took a look inside, they got a pair of 4 gig sticks and a pair of 2 gig sticks. I'm gonna definitely replace the the 2 uh, gig sticks with uh, fours so I can go up to 16 gigs. Um, 
it's got a nice fast SATA drive, 7200 RPM. It's a one terabyte. It's got a dedicated graphics card, AMD Radeon HD 6450. This particular card is supported very well by the Radeon driver, which is the one I'm using. It's the open source ATI driver. Uh, just for haha's, I actually um, compiled and installed the proprietary ATI driver. Really choppy. Um, the Radeon driver is fast, smooth, works really, really well. Um, I'm using the open source driver as opposed to um, the proprietary one. I think it works better. It's got uh, HDMI out, uh, VGA, and uh, DVI. And so uh, basically the way I hook up my monitor is... I go HDMI from my tower, and um, my monitor doesn't have an HDMI in, but it does have a DVI. So I have a HDMI to DVI adapter, and that's how I run my uh, my monitor setup. And uh, it's also got the True uh, Studio PC audio. It's got an 802.11n wireless card in it, which is great because that's how I actually connect to the internet in my office. My modem and router are actually in my living room with my entertainment center. And um, mainly because that's where the Xbox is, and um, I don't have a wireless card for the Xbox, so I connect wirelessly. And uh, so that's nice. It's got two P PCI Express um, spots on it. It's got eight USB ports, which is awesome because I have a ton of peripheral, uh, peripheral uh, devices. Let's see. And, and that's about it. Um, the other thing I love is this thing is whisper quiet. I mean, even when I'm compiling, uh, say, I, I just compiled a kernel tonight for this. I put a, a new Zen kernel together. Whisper, whisper quiet. Really, really nice. A um, couple of downsides to it is pretty cramped inside the case. For instance, if I wanted to add, like, a Blu-ray player to this, um, what I'm going to have to do is take out the whole power supply because the, the, the spot's so cramped in there. I, I can't actually clear... Um, the drive spot um, without move, removing the power supply, which kind of sucks. Um, however, I, I think you can take the front of it off, so I can actually um, go through the front uh, of the case. But you know, I'll, I'll toy around with it. I don't want to break anything. But uh, you know, it's a little bit cramped inside. Uh, the CPU cooler is actually pretty nice. The stock CPU cooler that it comes with. Um, so I may or may not upgrade that. We'll see. But um, there's an extra uh, right underneath the combo drive. There's an, an extra slot there. What I made to put in is um, a better sound card. Maybe I'm, I'm thinking about putting in some extra fans. Maybe put a fan controller there. Not quite sure, but I, I definitely know I'm going to be upgrading to that solid-state drive. Um, it's gonna, I'm probably going to pick up the Intel 120 gigabyte solid-state drive. I'll use the one terabyte drive that I have here, the SATA drive, for just storage. And I'll um, install my OS on, on the SSD. Um, but... This thing's a screamer. It, it's really, really fast, and I'm really happy. I think now that I have this particular uh, setup, it's something that's going to last me a couple years at least, um, and it's it's more than, than enough right now for what I have. Um, so I'm really, really happy with it. The price point, uh, if I didn't mention it before, is $950. Uh, even if you were going to put your own system together, for the the um, excuse me the Core i7 all the all the RAM the dedicated graphics card and so on you're going to be approaching pretty close to that price. Of course, if you build it independently, you know you can get fancier RAM. Um, your mother you can get a motherboard obviously that would allow you to overclock. Um, this doesn't allow you to overclock this particular motherboard. So you know, but honestly, three three point four to three point eight gigahertz is is fine. I'm not gaming on this. There's really no need for me to overclock it. Um, but anyway, so you know that's what I'm running right now. Got this new desktop. Really excited about it. Um, it's it's really really nice. I like it. So four computers and a month later, um, <laughs> here I am. So um, I'm going to be putting out some more content now that I have a reliable system, um, both Linux and um, Android related. So uh, stay tuned for that. Guys, sorry I'm yawning so much. It is really late. I had a long day today at work, barely slept. But anyway, um, that's it for now, guys. Uh, you know, if you've been wondering what's been going on, especially with the videos, this is it. So um, that's it for this update. As always, you guys are awesome. And until next time, we'll see you later.